Welcome back to the channel. So it's time to settle a debate. Will an AC compressor work as an air compressor and last be a viable option? I recently posted a video about the theory behind this and we're putting that theory to test. So let's talk about our setup here. We have our AC compressor. This came off of a Freightliner semi truck and I got it out of the dumpster. So I don't know why it was replaced, but I have spares around if this one is bad. So we have our engine here. This is your standard six and a half horse Harbor Freighter. Nothing special there. I did have to fab up a pulley to go onto this engine. This is also from scrap out of the bin. And that is running this serpentine belt for the compressor. Generally on your car, or at least on big diesels, the AC compressor actually is turning faster than the engine. I didn't have the right pulleys to make this compressor turn faster than the engine, but I think this setup will still be good enough for what we're doing. In this configuration, we are doing a gear reduction. Okay, so we have our air tank. I got a drain. I have a check valve for the inlet pressure. We have an air gauge. We have a pressure switch. So this switch here will kick the compressor off at 150 and engage the compressor clutch at 120. Quick coupler for air hose. We have a relay to do the heavy lifting. So since this AC compressor is an electromagnetic clutch input here, we can turn the guts of the compressor right now and the pulley doesn't turn. So when the electromagnetic clutch engages, which I can flip the switch here, it is now engaged. So now we are in the driving configuration. Now the only reason I installed the switch over here is so when I have the engine off and we are below our 120 PSI threshold in the air tank, this clutch would be still engaged if I didn't have a switch in the system. So that's the only need for the switch. There's no air in this tank right now, so that is why the clutch is engaged. And of course we needed voltage to run this clutch, so I have a DeWalt battery and an adapter. Now this is 20 volts, but I think for our testing purposes, this is okay. Pretty much all modern AC compressors cycle the oil throughout the system instead of the oil just being contained in the compressor. And that is kind of a hang up around using one of these because if there's no oil in the compressor, it will burn up. And if you are not feeding any oil to the inside or do some kind of modification to the guts of this thing, you're gonna have some issues likely. Now I did get some comments about how people have had a lot of success with using uh, grease packing the housing, which that's actually a really good idea. But I was kind of looking for an option to where I didn't have to pull the compressor apart or anything and just to be simple and just to maybe try something different and experiment. So the system I have come up with, which this isn't necessarily original or anything, I'm sure many others have done this. This is the inlet side of the compressor. I have an oil regulator. So it is currently filled with 1030 oil. Now that is not the ideal oil for the system. Uh, it would probably be best to use PAG oil, which would be the original type of oil that is in your AC system. The next best option would be to use air tool oil, which I don't have any of, of course, but I got lots of 1030 around, so that's what we're using anyways. So that is full of oil here, and as the compressor sucks air, it will also draw a small amount of oil. There is an adjustment with this regulator here. And on the inlet side of the regulator, I have an air filter installed so we're not sucking nasty air. All right, so there's the relay, air pressure gauge, 
all the tidbits. Nothing too fancy there. Mounted to a broken board and a dolly that I dug out of the dumpster. Let's put this heat to use. If you're interested a little bit more in how these modern Sandin type AC compressors work, this is a lamp I built for my youngest boy. And the main body of the lamp is from an AC compressor. So as we look in there, we can see a bunch of pistons. In this case, there are five bores. So there are pistons on the top, and if I turn it, you can see them move. There's a swash plate in the middle here. So that's pretty cool, but if you look, well, you can't really see on the back side too well, but there's also a piston on the underneath side. So five piston tops here, five piston tops on the bottom, and then there's some reed systems to help regulate the ins and outs. I'm kind of proud of this. This is cool. That's how you turn it on and off. Before we actually use this unit for anything practical, let's do a time test of building from zero to 150 PSI. Now this will be the first fire of this unit in this configuration. So we'll actually also be seeing if it even works. So zero and the gauge max is out at 160. Also while it's running, I was watching this clear glass bowl here and I could see that the engine is pulling a small amount of oil. That uh, air leak from the drain valve. So first test we're going to be framing upstairs in the shop. So we'll just be using this air for a framing nailer up there. And I think that I will just leave the engine idling this time. So we've been running this pretty hard for a while and out of the blue the clutch kicked out so it's not engaging currently and what I think is what has happened on the back side of this compressor what I thought was an overpressure switch to limit the max pressure that the compressor can build before cutting out the clutch I think this is actually a temperature sensor so this compressor did get kind of warm so I think the sensor kicked out the clutch so we're gonna let it sit a little bit and then get back to using it. I think it was a mistake keeping the engine idling because the compressor had to pretty much run constantly to keep up with uh, our air demand. I think it would be better actually to have the engine revved up so the compressor has some time to kick in and out, uh, just a little bit of cool down time. So this thing sat about an hour or two and the compressor's definitely cooled off. I think it was the temperature switch because I can now engage power and the clutch locks up. So since that temperature switch is in line with the clutch, it kicked it out on its own, which is a good thing. It probably kept this thing from burning itself up. So I do think that I have the oil turned up too much. We did notice while we were using our air tools that we got a lot of uh, just oil smell in the air. So I do have that adjustment and I'm going to turn it down. So I, I don't see any noticeable drop in the oil level. So it's being pretty frugal. Well, I'm uh, kind of done framing for a while. The press are still going strong, so we're going to have to up the ante. Now I've got a real test plan for this thing. I have this big 60 gallon air compressor. So we're gonna see how long it takes our AC compressor setup to fill this big 60 gallon tank to let's say 100 PSI. First, let's set our baseline. Now this unit has a nice electric motor and a big two cylinder compressor here. So we're gonna see how long 
using this compressor it takes to fill it from 0 to 100. 3 minutes. Not too bad. Our unit plumbed into that big air tank. Now, this is a little bit unfair because uh, this time we'll be filling the whole shop air system and the air tank. So I have went ahead and bypassed the temperature shutoff switch on the back of the compressor. I have a theory on how this test is going to end, so I'm not too worried about it, but we'll see. Just as I was turning it off, the airline for the discharge blew. <laughs> so you probably shouldn't use these nylon airlines for the discharge because uh, even on a normal setup, these lines tend to get pretty hot. <laughs> but that's funny that we just made our pressure and it blew. So that took a whopping 16 minutes to fill that 60 gallon air tank. <laughs> now that's not too impressive. Now to be fair, compared to our baseline, we did fill the whole shop air system as well as our tank on our unit. Uh, so we could probably deduct a couple minutes, but I still can't say I would recommend the AC compressor as your main shop compressor. So this test didn't quite go how I thought it would. I thought we would be running this unit till failure which we did have a failure in the airline, and I had kind of anticipated that actually already, but I am very impressed that this compressor did hold together for this amount of air. So some final notes on if you're planning on building a setup like this or converting your car, buggy, off-road rig, AC compressor to air compressor. I think I can safely say that this is a decent idea as long as your air demand isn't very high or your pressure demand is really high. So I think this setup, it would actually be more ideal to have your cut out pressure at like 120, maybe cut in at like 90 or something like that. Someone pointed out on my last video that even though these compressors do hit over 300 PSI in the AC system, since it is a closed loop, there's always pressure being fed to the inlet side as well. So that doesn't necessarily mean that this compressor in this configuration should operate at a really high PSI. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I had fun doing this and testing it. If you're a tinker, this is the place for you. Consider subscribing. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a teardown of this compressor after it's had all this abuse. Keep thinking.